Welcome back. My name is Jim Casey, and we're talking about faith. <laughs> Without faith, it's impossible to please God. The only way you can walk with Him is by faith. And uh, because you can't see Him, so you can't walk in with your feelings, your physical feelings, or anything like that. It's by faith. So he says, without faith, it's impossible to please him, and you must believe that he is. Again, you can't see him. You have to believe that he is. And if you ask Jesus to come into your heart to be your Lord and Master, then you believe that he lives inside of you. 1 John 4, 4 says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. God lives inside of me by his Spirit. God lives inside of me. The Holy Spirit is God, just like Jesus is God. So God lives inside of me. Can't see him? I can't. I don't feel anything. But he's inside of me, according to the word. That's by faith. And if you've got God living inside of you, then, oh, Lord, you should succeed in every area of life with no problem. And I believe that. All right. Now, we have already talked about how man is a three-part being. You know, I, I am a spirit. I have a soul and I live in a physical body. And then we talked about how actually the soulish realm then, in this context of this verse, is talking about the, the, the physical mind and the physical and the spiritual mind and how these emotions, the will and emotions, are all hooked together with our, the core, our core, or in the natural realm, we'd say our, our gut. And... Um, well, anyway, <laughs> uh, let's see if I can if I can remember this. But in the Song of Solomon, uh, there is a interesting passage talking about how the emotions in your gut and everything. And oh yeah, come on back here, Song of Solomon. Please don't give me so much trouble. All right, and so we come here, and um, oh. Let's see. Yeah. And so here in Song of Solomon, in the, in the New King James, in, in, in chapter 5 of Song of Solomon, in verse 4, My beloved put his hand by the latch of the door, and my heart yearned for him. See, the emotions are in the heart. But I thought it was kind of funny that in the old King James, it reads this way. My beloved put his hand by the latch of the door and my bowels were moved for him. <laughs> my bowels were moved. Well, the new King James clean, cleaned that mess up a little bit by saying, my heart yearned, yearned for him. <laughs> well, anyway, there's difference in translations. <laughs> well, my heart yearns for God. Okay. Now, we uh, believe with the inner man. We have already, you know, we've already been to Mark chapter 11 and 23. And, and we see in verse 23, it says, But for surely, I say to you, who have said this mountain be removed, and be cast to see him, does not doubt in his heart, does not doubt in his heart, but believes. Does not doubt in his heart, but believes. And of course, the believing takes place you're not to doubt, but you're to believe. Where? In your heart. Don't doubt in your heart. And don't, but believe in your heart. And of course, we took Romans chapter 10 and verse 9 and 10. And uh, there we found that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that he's raised from the dead, then you'll be saved. For with the heart, one believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. All right. So then we see also... Let's get as many scriptures as we can and get as many different angles as we can. But I want to right now come over here to Philippians and pick it up here in chapter 1. And we begin to see that the Apostle Paul and his physical body are two different things. Verse 21 of chapter 1 of Philippians, the Apostle Paul says, For, me to, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. But... If I, see, now you've got to watch the scriptures and notice what this verse said. But if I, well, who is I? I is the human spirit living inside of this physical body. Remember, the scriptures are addressed to the human spirit. 
I. But if I live on in the flesh, or you could say my flesh, his flesh, but if I live on in the flesh, so I and the flesh are two different things. And so again, you know, there'll be countless scriptures you run into like this. And you'll be now with a little bit that you've been taught so far, for those of you who've never heard this before, you're going to catch these things as you're reading your Bible and say, whoa, wait a minute, that's me, that's my body, that's whatever. And it says, but if I live on in the flesh, this will mean fruit from my labor, yet what I shall choose I cannot tell. For I am hard pressed between the two, having the desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better, nevertheless to remain in the flesh or to remain in this physical body is more needful for you. So if you take verse 24 and back up to verse 23, for I am hard pressed between the two, having a desire to depart my physical body and this physical dimension and be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to remain in the flesh or the physical body is more needful for you. So you can see very clearly there the difference between Paul as the human spirit and his flesh. All right, now we'll come back here to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. And we'll pick it up in verse 1. Okay, now listen to this. Here we go. I beseech you, therefore, brethren. Now, you, of course, is the human spirit. I beseech you, Jim Caseman, human spirit inside that physical body. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. So here we go now. That you present your body. So you and your body are two different things. That you present your bodies. See, there's lots of scriptures like this because it's addressed to the human spirit, not your body. That you present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So you, as a human spirit, have a mind. See, it's not talking about the physical mind here. It said you and your mind. The human spirit has a mind. And it has a heart. <laughs> it, has, it's a, it, it has everything that you see with this physical body. Except if I was to step outside my body, you would see me with hands, hands, eyes, ears, everything. And then you'd see my body standing over here. The flesh part of my body. Praise God. You need to visualize that and get that good. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And in process, and in renewing your mind, then the physical mind will be renewed as well. By renewing your mind, you'll be renewing your physical mind as well, or reprogramming it. Because before you accepted Jesus into your heart. If, if you were like me, I'd never read the Bible. So I had no spiritual knowledge at all. And so I had to, to then reprogram my thinking in addition to what I've learned in the physical world, physical knowledge. Now I'm going to have to learn spiritual knowledge and learn to operate from the spiritual end instead of just totally physically. Be led by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will tell me what to do in the physical dimension. Amen. So do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is a good and acceptable, able and perfect will of God. All right. Well, we have enough time. We'll run over here to John chapter 19 and pick it up right down here in verse, ooh, let's get over here to 19 and we'll pick it up in verse 38. And here Jesus is standing in front of the uh, Pontius Pilate. And after this, uh, Joseph Aramea, being his disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away, now get this, the body of Jesus. Not Jesus, the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave them permission, so he came and took the body of Jesus. Not Jesus, he's in another place, in the spiritual dimension. But the physical body, and they put it into a physical grave. 
And Jesus, now that he was made sin for you and me, he descended into that spiritual grave. All right. Talk about more of that later. Our time's up. Be blessed richly in everything you set your hands to do until we meet next time. Glory to God. <laughs>